The way I've set this camera up now, I can pretty much operate it with a single hand. Since I'm shooting program auto, the camera itself takes care of the f-stop and shutter speed. Still, should I feel the need to compensate exposure, this function is set to the front dial, very easily and quickly accessible. Also, my zebras have already been set up. The FN1 button up here brings me to my metering modes, select via front dial, set via shutter button. Switching from continuous to manual focus is done up here, switching back as well. FN2 holds the quick menu, so I can quickly change video modes. Down here, I can set the autofocus mode, choosing via front or rear dial and setting via shutter button. ISO, choosing with the rear dial, setting with the shutter button, white balance, again choosing with the rear or the front dial, and setting again via the shutter button. Should I use a level gauge, it's on F3, and should I feel the need to use an external monitor via Wi-Fi, FN4 holds that function. Apart from changing video modes, I don't have to do a single menu dive to operate this camera. And if you want to set up your G7 for vlogging the same way, break this thing out, let's do it together. I won't talk about every menu item, just the ones that are crucial to the setup. Where I would start is manual mode, go into the rec menu, move up one. The first thing I would do is face recognition. I would register my face. Unfortunately, Bruno here can't be registered because he's a dog. Then I would switch to my main shooting mode, which is manual video mode. And I'm going to shoot the camera in program auto. That's what I want when vlogging. Not thinking, just turning on the camera and trusting it. First menu, motion picture menu. Photo style. What I use is called Cine Like D. It's a flat profile. It'll give me more range to work with in post-production color grading. No filter, no snap movie, rec format, always MP4. Better if you want the files to be viewed on a computer monitor. Rec quality, full HD 25p, continuous autofocus on. My metering mode, center weight, because it's a good compromise between multi-metering and spot metering. Because when vlogging, it exposes myself correctly without neglecting the surrounding areas. Highlight shadow, one of the best features of this camera and this is where I tweak my picture style a little. Here you can bring down the highlights and I do that as much as possible because the results of retaining the highlights have been great. You can also bring up the shadows but I tend to only go to two here because if you bring them up to five noise becomes a problem. I'm gonna save that to custom one and set it. None of this, none of this, none of this. Luminous level, full range, 0 to 255. None of this, none of this. Everything that makes the operation of this camera more silent is well appreciated because it draws less attention and makes vlogging easier. Mic level display, definitely on. I want to know if I record audio and if I do, I want to know if it levels correctly. Very important setting. Mic level adjustment, if you're using an external mic like a Video Mic Pro, my setting is minus 5, but that varies depending on the kind of mic you're using. Mic level limiter, very good setting. Although you might have leveled everything correctly there might be distortion in your sound due to your surroundings so when this happens and the camera detects distortion in your audio mic level limiter levels down the audio a bit wind noise canceller only important if you're not using external audio still if you're using internal audio my advice would be to turn this off and get some micro wind muffs that do a far better job than anything this internal processing could do silent mode on the more silent you can make this camera, the better. Doesn't concern me, doesn't concern me. Shutter autofocus, very important feature. Check out my video about the autofocus modes of the Panasonic G7 and I'll show you in detail how useful this setting is. None of this concerns me. Direct focus area, turn it off, because if you turn it on, what happens when you're in this mode, instead of getting the functions that these buttons show, you're changing focus points. Direct focus area is turned off and now you're getting your focus modes, your ISO, and your white balance. Not interesting, not interesting, not interesting. Histogram is turned off because I think it just crowds up the screen. You have to put it somewhere, you can move it around. This is something I would use when studio is shooting. So histogram turned off. Also, I don't use guidelines. I use a level gauge that I'll show you later. Center marker, I turn that on. This is one of the features I do like. It's a little crosshair in the middle that shows you exactly where the center of the frame is. 
highlights turned off. What I use is a zebra pattern and I set zebra one to 95%. So it shows me whites that are clipped just a little bit before they're clipped. And when you're vlogging, you're not really gonna set lights or anything. So this is just to check if your video is overexposed completely. If there are some areas that the zebras show up, that's okay. But if there's a lot of areas, you might wanna change the angle you're shooting at. Monochrome live view doesn't concern me. Constant preview, if you shoot in any other video mode, then program auto, constant preview will always show you aperture and shutter speed on your screen. Exposure meter is on. The display styles, monitor info display, it's okay. FN button set. I don't really assign a lot of custom functions to the custom buttons, but in red mode I do. And I do wanna assign the F3 button level gauge. And I do wanna assign the F4 button Wi-Fi settings because I do use them quite often. Not for vlogging, but in general, it sits well with the FN4 button. Oh, and before I forget, I do wanna set the FN1 button to metering modes. I don't customize the quick menu, dial set. The only thing I'm gonna do is I will have exposure compensation on the front dial. Video button is of course on, now the eye sensor. This is important because right now, if you're doing this, the menu disappears. The eye sensor is on and it thinks your face is close to the camera so it switches to the LDF and turns off the monitor. So sensitivity is not enough of our concern, this is what we want. And we wanna switch to monitor only. So this doesn't do anything. Touch settings. Touch screen on, of course, is one of the best touch screens I have ever used. Touch tab, I don't need any of these buttons right here. I don't need that. So touch tab is off. Now it's only one, better than nothing. Touch autofocus, I'm setting to autofocus and auto exposure. So if I'm touching somewhere, it also exposes correctly. Touch scroll, I set to high. This is just scrolling speed when looking through your recorded videos. Menu guide, shoot without lens, doesn't concern me right now. Now it's about saving power. Live view mode, 30 frames per second is enough. Monitor display, brightness turned down. Monitor luminance, auto is okay. Economy, sleep mode, of course one minute. LVF monitor off, one minute also. Menu resume on. Leave this on because if you're leaving the menu and you're going back into the menu, it remembers where you were. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. In any case, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in another video.